Hi, my name is Martin Pehiniak. Welcome back to the Digital Arts series here on PSD Touch Plus. Today we are going to talk about how to draw drapery in Photoshop. This is a really, really interesting topic and uh, it is fairly simple to do because we only need to combine uh, basic tools in Photoshop, usually the tools that we used in previous uh, tutorials like the brush tool, mixer brush, dodge and burn. So the technique itself is not that difficult, but it's more about learning how the uh, folds are formed on drapery and how a drapery wraps around an object. So once again, it is more important to learn from real life and um, that's why I have this picture here, this collection of images where you can see some references or samples of drapery. First of all, this line I think is the best if you want to think about how shall I start when I draw drapery. So it's the line says, by itself drapery is quite flat, but under the forces of gravity, tension, compression and pressure cloth forms into a variety of shapes and folds. So bear in mind this sentence whenever you draw drapery and remember these keywords gravity, tension, compression and pressure. So this is really important. When you draw drapery it has to be similar to like water or sand. So it's a fluid form which is mainly um, formed by gravity and also tension. To be able to describe the drapery's form, you have to also understand the, the objects and how they relate to each other. So the object which is covered by the uh, drapery and the compression and pressure between the two things. For instance, if it's a cloth, a dress, then it's mainly about the twisting and turning of the body. You can see it on the right side, on the red dress, that the folds will appear mainly where there is compression on the left side. Okay, so this is, this is a really important thing. And if you use cloth and drapery well, you can, you can emphasize the movement and the posture of, uh, of your characters. But it's not only for uh, characters, you can also use it for lots of different things in digital art. You can use it for flags, ribbons, capes and so on and so forth. Remember before we start that you always have to think about the object below the drapery and you also have to remember that it is formed or the folds on the drapery are formed by gravity, tension, compression and pressure. So here's my blank screen and I have an empty layer and I'm going to use my brush tool and I have 100% opacity and I'm using a tablet uh, with pressure sensitivity so I can easily draw. Uh, it's much easier than with a mouse. I'm using a Vacuum Intuos 4 tablet and as you can see I'm quickly drawing the outline of this cloth and I'm drawing the folds coming down from the top and now I'm using uh, still the brush tool but I changed it to a soft edge brush and I set the opacity to 5%. Now I'm adding the detail to this um, drapery so I'm adding the shadows because we need to see the contrast between the folds, the highlights and the shadows that will help us to make this look three-dimensional. Okay, so I'm adding more and more shadows and now I switch to the mixer brush tool to blend these lines a bit together with the shadows because there's, it is quite rare to see a very like strong edge on drapery, it's always fluid like sand or water. So that's what I'm doing with the mixer brush tool. I'm mixing uh, the tones, tonal values together and I'm switching back uh, between the brush tool, uh, the dodge tool, um, uh, sorry I mean the burn tool 
and the mixer brush tool so I'm using these three and as you can see I start to get a pretty much final result on this uh, drapery you can always increase the contrast to make it look even more three-dimensional that's what I'm doing now I'm adding some stronger shadows um, on some areas that will help me describe this form further okay so that's a quick example of the whole workflow how to draw the drapery and now I'm going to use another interesting CS5 feature called the puppet warp tool uh, edit puppet warp where you can place down these little pinpoints and then drag them around and reshape your whole drawing I just wanted to show you this interesting uh, uh, feature because with this you can completely reshape your drawing if you're not happy with it and then you can use again the mixer brush tool just to uh, blend some details on it okay so this is just a quick example but I'm going to keep this straight because that's the way I wanted to use it and I have another image here this is a photograph of a chair Be because as a second example I would like to show you how to draw the drapery on an object because that's even more important to learn as you can see I created a new layer, an empty layer for my drapery and once again I start with the outline. I'm using a thin brush and I'm drawing with 100% opacity. I try to make sure that all the lines uh, will connect so I would like to make sure that it's a closed outline because before I'm going to start these lines I'm going to select this whole inner part with the magic wand so here I just wanted to show you instead of drawing the lines in the middle I'm going to use the magic wand and I'm going to select the inner part of this uh, line of this shape and I fill it in with white the keyboard shortcut if you have the default color is command or control backspace to fill with white so I have that outline and the white fill and I've set the opacity to 65% to be able to see the chair itself that helps me to draw the lines but at the same time see the object beneath the, uh, the drapery it's like a transparent drapery you can see that I'm start, I start to build the lines which will create these, all these folds for the drapery and I love to work with drapery because it's, it's just so um, random and so easy to come up with shapes and forms and uh, describe an object with, uh, with the drapery itself on top of it so you can see I'm experimenting what are the best lines to use and I try to keep it fluid and natural but random at the same time and I always think of gravity and uh, as you can see all the lines are coming down then hit the, the chair and then again fold over and go further down so think of liquid like uh, pouring milk down from the top and and just freeze that moment that's how that's how drapery works and um, you can see now that I've set the opacity back to 100% that we have a fairly good detail level already okay try not to draw too many lines because then you will lose uh, the whole quality the texture of uh, of your drapery I'm still using the brush tool just like before I'm going to use a 5% opacity and you can see I've turned on the lock transparency and I just show you that now if I draw over this layer I will only draw over the constraint uh, area with the outline so I won't be able to draw outside of it that's a really good option so that's on the layers panel and the first icon after lock that's lock transparency it's useful because then you won't draw outside uh, of the outline that you already started working with and just like before I'm using the brush with 5% opacity a soft edge brush and I'm just drawing over the drapery and try to describe the shape by adding shadows and now I'm using the mixer brush just like before to blend the 
tonal values, these shadows, together with the lines that I have. It's all in the, on the same layer. And don't be afraid of mixing them together and reshaping some areas if you don't like them. So you can always be brave and just experiment with all these lines. Okay, so don't stick to your first lines. Try to always uh, be uh, experimental with all these uh, details and try to look for something that you feel uh, looks the best. Okay, so you can see I try to get rid of those sharp lines because they don't look really realistic and if I blend them together with the mixer brush or you can use the smudge tool in previous versions because the mixer brush is a CS5 version yeah, it uh, works better with the, with the smudge tool so you can, you can use the mixer brush and then if you want to add more shadows you just switch back to the burn tool and emphasize some areas further so add more details and increase the contrast uh, between the folds but while increasing the shadow detail bear in mind that you also have to add highlights or do you don't you don't want to lose your highlights that that's why I'm using now the dodge tool which is the opposite of the burn tool to be able to add some highlights okay so uh, you can only describe something three-dimensional uh, while you're drawing if you have highlights and shadows contrasting uh, each other okay so it's not enough to have shadows you also have to have the highlights now I created an adjustment layer and I'm using a clipping mask on uh, between the adjustment layer and the uh, layer with the drapery so the adjustment layer will only affect the drapery layer and as you can see I used uh, a colorize option with the hue saturation layer so I by uh, reducing the lightness and changing the hue and saturation I could add this nice blue color and now I was drawing on the chair layer just added with the burn tool some shadow detail uh, directly on uh, below the edges of the drapery and now I created a new layer and I just wanted to show you that by adding some fine details um, to make it look like a pattern or a texture on the drapery can also emphasize the form uh, of your of your drapery okay so you can follow all these uh, forms that you created with some thin lines and it's up to you what kind of detail you would like to add but no matter what you do if you be if you just simulate the form a little bit it will help to describe the whole shape okay it's not necessary it's just an interesting thing to try out and obviously the more complicated uh, your folds are the more complicated it will be to to add the texture properly but it will definitely make make it it will make it more interesting so you can see uh, after just a couple of lines we have an extra detail uh, on our drapery and you can always change the color as well on it so that's our final result and I hope you found this tutorial useful and the techniques we were talking about uh, you can use in your own digital paintings just again with, with anything else that uh, we discussed in, dig in this uh, series make sure that you practice this, uh, these techniques and keep yourself motivated by drawing again and again try to do well, like 10 to 20 different drapery uh, draperies quickly don't be intimidated by the results that you get first because the more you draw the better you will get it's it's with everything in photoshop the more you practice it the better you will get but also don't forget to look for references because if you only stick to your own imagination you might get something wrong and it's always good to look for references and these references are really easy to find on the internet okay so thanks a lot for your attention in the next tutorial we will take this a step further and we are going to draw a dress uh, for a character so thanks a lot for your attention today and i hope you will join me next time as well see you soon